Hello and welcome on board. I'm Clarisse Forcuné, our top stories. Tension is running high in Senegal as lawmakers consider extending President Macky Sall's tenure following his decision to postpone the country's February 25th election for the election. The African mining industry in Daba is in its 30th year, South African president says. Investors need to ensure that communities around mines also benefit from the mining gains. And she's only 22, but she already got herself a Grammy Award. South African singer Tyla won for her song Water in the Best African Music Performance. Senegalese lawmakers on Monday are debating President Macky Sall's bid for six months delay to February 25th elections. Macky Sall's decisions sparked clashes outside parliament and has prompted international concern. In Dakar, mobile internet is restricted and security forces used tear gas to, dis to disperse small groups of opposition protesters outside the National Assembly. Leo Maguin has more. Fresh clashes in Dakar between demonstrators and police, with officers using tear gas to try and quell the protests on Monday. The latest scuffles took place in front of the National Assembly, where deputies were debating a controversial constitutional bill. They were discussing the six-month postponement of the presidential election, which was announced on Saturday by President Macky Sall. News which protesters say that they will not take lying down. What's happening at the National Assembly is illegal. They are traitors. They have betrayed the Senegalese people. We elected them to the National Assembly to represent us, the Senegalese people. I don't think that the decisions that come out of the Assembly are suitable for discussion. They are not deputies of the people, but deputies of the President. The prospect of postponed elections triggered a wave of protests across the capital on Sunday with clashes between demonstrators and the police, who made several arrests. The government has since restricted mobile internet access in an attempt to temper the dissent. This is the first time since 1963 that a presidential election has been postponed in Senegal, a country that has never experienced a coup d'etat. And our correspondent Sam Bradpiece reports from Dakar where he's been following the situation. MPs are yet to approve this law that would fix a new presidential election date here in Senegal. The new date proposed is August 25th, six months later than originally scheduled. Opposition MPs are trying to block the legislation, arguing that the poll should be held on February 25th as originally scheduled. All of this, of course, follows an announcement from the president, Macky Sall, over the weekend. Macky Sall is arguing uh, for the elections to be postponed indefinitely uh, because of what he cited as corruption allegations against the country's constitutional council. That's a body which effectively oversees the electoral process. And Macky Sall says that a full investigation needs to be launched, otherwise there's no way to guarantee fair and credible elections. Opposition figures and members of the public that we've spoken to have cited this as a constitutional coup d'etat. They see it as a power grab from the president. The police, meanwhile, have been cracking down hard on dissent using tear gas. Hundreds of opposition figures remain in prison. The press is under attack. The police are preventing journalists from doing their job on the ground. For many, the state of Senegalese democracy has simply never been so perilous. And long held as a model for African democracy, Senegal has not been immune to political crisis. The 2019 presidential elections were marred by the exclusion of several candidates, and again in 2024, with the rejection of opposition leader Ousmane Sonko's candidacy that sparked widespread riots. Laurent Bercecher. December 2018, Senegal's Constitutional Council rejected the candidacies of Karim Wad, the son of former President Abdoulaye Wad, and of former Dakar mayor Khalifa Sall. Both had been previously sentenced for corruption and were barred from running in the upcoming presidential election. 
On February 24, 2019, Macky Sall was re-elected with 58% of votes. Five years later, in January 2024, the Constitutional Council once again rejected the candidacy of Karim Wad, whose double French Senegalese nationality made him ineligible to run for president. The council also barred opposition leader Ousmane Sonko from running, citing his recent judicial troubles. Sonko's sentencing in June 2023 for defamation had sparked massive riots across Senegal, in which several people lost their lives. The opposition leader, who denounced a political scheme to discredit him, had appealed the ruling, but the decision was upheld by the Supreme Court, excluding him from the election. And for more analysis, my colleague Tom Burgess Watson talked a little bit earlier to Douglas Yates. He's a professor of political science at the American Graduate School and expert in African politics. It's the official pretext, but I don't think anybody believes them, that there was a problem with the constitution of the constitutional court, that he wanted to make sure the court was seen as unbiased. But here, there's nothing but a perception of bias. So if that was his idea, it was a failure. Rather, the reports that are coming out from kind of the behind-the-scenes press is that there's pressure from his own camp from his own camp, from the ruling party, they don't want the prime minister to be the candidate. The prime minister is a talented, technocratic individual who is supposed to be number two for Macky Sall. But as a candidate, he's a fish and he's predicted to lose. And if he loses, the party loses. Whoever is president has all the power in Senegal. And so I think that at the last minute, his own ministers are saying, you can't continue to endorse this man who's going to lose. We've got to have a better plan or we're going to lose power. And I think he's not planning himself to run for president anymore. If he had announced that, this would all be interpreted differently. But he probably does want his party to remain in power. Right, because Macky Sall's been there for 11 years. Mm. He can't constitutionally run for a third term, can he? Uh, and, and therefore, you're saying that the party's trying to buy some time to find a, a more promising candidate than uh, what they've put forward so far. Mm. So in terms of time frame, what, what are we talking about here? A couple of months of delay? More mm. than that? Well, they, uh, there was no announcement at first. We call that sine die. But in reality, he's not trying to, like a coup plotter, prolong his time forever. So we're looking at maybe August. That would be reasonable. Six months would give them time to sort out what's internal divisions in his own camp, as well as dealing with the opposition, who many of them are taking to the streets. Uh, and of course, Senegal uh, is, is a rare country in the region where, where it is, in West Africa. There have been lots of coups in that part of Africa. And yet Senegal, since independence from France in, I believe, 1960, has managed not to uh, witness any coups. I mean, could that be about to change? Well, some people are afraid of that. And it's a real concern because we've had coups in Mali, coups in Burkina Faso, coups in Niger, coups in Guinea, uh, and in Central Africa, coups in Gabon. There's been coups all around. But Senegal is unique. It's had three peaceful transitions of power. 1982, Abdou Diouf, came to power in a peaceful transition. After that, 1999, we had Abdoulaye Wad came to power in a peaceful transition. And in 2012, Macky Sall came to power in a peaceful transition. That's three turnovers. Senegal is a consolidated democracy. Elections are the only game in town. So I do not believe, I strongly do not believe, if the past is any indicator that there will be a coup d'etat in Senegal. Rather, things will calm down and there will be elected a new president. OK, so you sound quite optimistic mm. this will blow over. Uh, what are Senegal's allies, meanwhile, saying at this stage? And, and by that, I mean the African Union and the European Union? And the United States. And the United States. This country as a model of democracy is an extremely important example for the West. For France, it's one of the most democratic Francophone countries left standing. For the United States, the American president's visit Senegal because it is a model of democracy for Europe. Uh, once again, it gives them a, a plausible interlocutor. And for ECOWAS, who have literally lost three members, military coups who are now Russian allies, who they had no influence over, Senegal is kind of the, the strongest democracy in the group. So they have a very difficult time telling Macky Sall what to do. 
in addition, because he is not presenting himself for office. So they're trying to encourage Senegal to schedule elections, but I don't think they think this is going to be like a military regime that's clinging to power. A few more months, and we should expect to have elections, and after that, a new president democratically elected, either from the government or from the opposition. OK, and just lastly, we haven't got much time left. Macky Sall's report card. He's been there 11 years. Has he done a good job? Uh, my view is, economically, he did a good job. That is, he's uh, created economic growth. He's dealt with serious issues like the food crisis. He managed COVID during confinement. And he's also brought Senegal into a new sector, which is oil, a dangerous sector with an oil curse, but one which provides the government with revenues to do on social spending. He created gender parity in the legislature. He appointed the first female prime minister. If he had not thought of running for a third term, he probably now would be watching his endorsed successor take office and would have enjoyed a wonderful reputation with policy accomplishments. But he made the critical error of the temptation of power. In South Africa, the African mining Indaba is celebrating its 30th anniversary under the theme, embracing the power of positive disruption a bold new future for African mining. The four-day conference will lead discussions on the industry across the African continent. Our correspondent, Eunice Masson, was at the opening. 8,000 delegates from over 126 countries gathered today in Cape Town for the African mining in Daba opening this international event. Uh, South Africa's uh, Mineral Resources Minister Gwedi Mantashe called upon all African nations to work together to compete on a global stage. We hope that we will engage from this year's mining endeavor with renewed vigor and commitment to invest in, in Africa's new mining order. That is geared towards making African mining industry a significant global competitor. We can't avoid that. African countries must work together to ensure that we get that. In South Africa, the mining industry contributes 7% towards the GDP and makes out 60% of the export value. Uh, it's the backbone of the economy of South Africa, yet it experiences a lot of challenges and constraints uh, like energy, logistics and crime. And there have been calls to modernize the online mining system known as the cadastre system. Today, Minister Montache announced that it will take 12 months to set up this cadastre system, hoping to encourage investing, uh, mining investment in the country. And this Monday was a national day of mourning in Namibia as tributes continue to flood in after former president Hage Gengob passed away on Sunday. Nangolo Mbumba, the former vice president, was inaugurated as his successor until next elections due later this year. Sunday night was a big night for the music industry. The American singer Taylor Swift won Album of the Year for the fourth time. And the new category for Best African Music Performance was awarded to a very young artist, the 22-year-old South African singer Tyler. She won for her song, Water. Let's listen to a bit of her song, Water. Can you search my soul from me?
，同学你好。根据数据显示，你的税务产出、绩效表现、调薪实现等均已达到加薪要求。今天穿到啊，去的对吧？所以你看，其实我没有在播，我就正在这里坐着，然后我现在就可以去忙我自己的事情了。China, the rule of AI in reporters on France 24 and France24.com.